Mesdames et messieurs, bonjour. <laughs> okay, that's not really me. Hey, everybody, Scott Kelby here. We're very excited to have cool Frenchy guy with us, Paris-based photographer, Serge Ramelli. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give an American accent. You can't pull that here. No, I know, I know. I... Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Scott. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I have a problem. You know, I, I have it. The French comes off and off. You know, that's what can yeah, I say? That's your French it. goes in and out. I talk about that on the grid. I know. I know. It's, like, it's if not you, stable. If you, if you go watch. Well, you spend so much time in America, right? Yes. You spend a lot of time here. But, you know, if you watch one of his videos, like I go to your YouTube page, which you have an awesome YouTube page. I go to you. Serge's YouTube page. I watch a video and he's in Paris. And he's like, Madame is monsieur, you know. Uh, bonjour. It's me, bonjour. I'm here in my beautiful city of France. We're going to do Lightroom. And then 20 minutes into the tutorial, he sounds like he does now. He's like, <laughs> then you go up under the file menu and you go, and I'm like, where's all the French stuff? It's a lie. It comes in and out. No, it's real. I mean, the first time I ever met you was in Paris. I met your family. You, <laughs> He knows Paris too good not to be a native. Um, but anyway, we're very glad to have you here on the show, jokes and all. Yes. Um, and and I got to tell you guys, we have an amazing topic today. Serge and I, he was, we were to, it was Serge's idea for the topic today, which is really about getting your, about, it's not about putting your images, it's how to present your images mm. for social media. And he was telling me stories and I was like, are you going to talk about this stuff on the grid? He's like, yeah. I'm like, this is going to be an awesome show. So tell your friends, stop whatever you're doing right now, go on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you are, and say, hey, it, you're going to have your mind blown today on the grid with Serge. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're glad to have you here. Jen's here. She's moderating the comments. Uh, good to see you guys here. Oh, we got to give a couple quick shout outs. Everyone's here. Okay. P P Piotr? Piotr's here. Dald's here. Fernando Cheeky Nando is here. Rose is up early in New Zealand. Stephanie's here. Doc's in the house. Carl from Colorado. No, he's not from Colorado. I keep saying he's from Colorado, but he's from someplace else. Tell us where you're from, Carl, because it's not Colorado. It's someplace <laughs> else. Anyway, Jeff's here from, all the way from Tarpon Springs. <laughs> wow. That's, that's all far. right. Uh, Rose says you need to add some more pictures to your Instagram page. Hey, I just, like, put a whole bunch of new ones up there, Rose. You, you haven't looked in a while. <laughs> all right. Johan's here from the Netherlands. He says hi, and he says, Serge, have you ever uh, photographed our beautiful country? No, I have or, not. But will you ever? Yes, I do. Now, you are banned, though, from the Netherlands, aren't you? Not really, no. You know why you don't want him to come to your country? Let me tell you why. Because what he'll do is he'll come, he'll take spectacular pictures, and he will suck the life out of every art gallery. This, How many galleries is your work in? Uh, 85 through one network called Yellow Corner, and one more because I'm in a Caesar Palace since one week in Las Vegas. Right. So <laughs> don't let him come to your country because he'll just suck all of the <laughs> air out of the room there. All right. There we go. Carl from Quebec. From Quebec. See, when we see CO, we that's we like, oh, Colorado, like FL, Florida. No, all right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Chiki Nando says, hey, Serge, hey, Scott, this is going to be a great show. Yes, it is. Have you visited the community today? Well, now, Serge is, is going to be doing some classes for us in a couple of weeks, right? Yes. So Serge is going to be back. He's taping a couple of classes for us, some really cool Lightroom stuff. And uh, then he will be in the community because when you do a class, right, your class is tied to a discussion on your classes where people go and say, why don't you sound as French in real life? So there'll be a lot of that that talk, don't you think, Jen? All right, Dalton says hi. Bonjour, Scott and Serge from Piotr. Hello. And uh, Mirta says hi from Argentina. Spies, please speak a little slowly for people that are not born in the USA. What is she talking about? He's not born in the USA. I'm from Paris. He's from Paris. <laughs> La fromage. All right. Bon. We have a lot to talk about, but I got, I got a bunch of news, so we're going to start off with some new stuff. Mm -hmm. So last week while I was sleeping, Canon came out with a new camera. So the, the, the Canon 6D was like way overdue for an overhaul. Mm. And I will say this. They, they did. They stepped up in a huge way in 99.9% .9 of the ways. So here's I made a couple of notes real quick, and, and here's what it is. So the 6D Mark II, all right, it's 26 megapixels versus 20. So six more megapixels, six and a half frames per second, which is respectable, mm -hmm. versus like four and a half. Eh. Uh, it has a touch screen, which the old one didn't have. It's an articulating touch screen. So it comes out, and you can flip it up, and you can flip it down. It goes all over. They have a, a fancy name for it. What's it called here? The, which uh, is really cool for vlogging. 
Yeah, oh, it's great for that. It's great for shooting above a crowd. You can do selfies. It's all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, it has a, the new Digic 7 processor, so an all-new processor versus the old 5. Probably the biggest thing is the autofocus correction is huge. So they went from an 11-point autofocus to a 45-point all-cross-type autofocus. Now, SLR Lounge, which is a blog that I follow, and I, they're very, you ever go to SLR Lounge? Absolutely, great, yeah, great yeah. blog. They said, to call it an improvement is an understatement. It's a game changer. So they were they thought that was that big, uh, big of a deal. Let's see what else. It's got GPS. It's got Bluetooth. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got Wi-Fi with NFC. Uh, it's now dust and water resistance. It has built-in time uh, near field communications. It's kind of like uh, Apple Pay. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but you don't don't say Scott said it's got Apple Pay. It doesn't have <laughs> Apple Pay. Anyway, hey, look at this. Looks we've got some people. We've got some extra people here. All right, Benno. Benno is now. I know who he is. He's an amazing photographer from Dubai. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, his city shots of Dubai are just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. It could be Bino, Benno. It's got to be Benno, right? Benno, yeah. Benno. All right. Benar. And so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher your name, but you, you deserve a shout out because I follow you on social media. Uh, Benno Sardizic. Saradzik. 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 All right, there say. we go. We need, Bonjour, we, need, we need many people to pronounce your name, but <laughs> shout out to you. Uh, Peter Treadway's here. Evening all. Hi, Peter. Peter is one of my buddies from London. Great guy. Bonsoir. Uh, don't go to London either. Uh, uh, Timothy says good afternoon and evening from South Korea this morning. Good to see you here. Gilbert mm. says hi, mm. and Gabriel's here from Sweden. All right, now getting back to my 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 uh, sixteen. So they did all these great things. Built-in time lapse. It says native ISO up to forty thousand versus what was twenty-five thousand. Mm. Full HD video at sixty frames per second, and the old one had thirty frames. And it has digital image stabilization for video, so the video was much better. What doesn't it have? 4K video. <laughs> and so they've done this amazing upgrade. It's got everything in the world that a 6D user could ever want, but they stopped just short. Now, it is an, if, I don't know if how well you know the Canon line, it is the entry level. Yeah, for the full frame. Full frame. Full, yeah. full frame. Yeah. Like it's the, it's the cheapest, most inexpensive. It's $1,999, so it's not, a, it's not an inexpensive camera, but it's the cheapest full frame Canon you can buy. If you're just getting into full frame and stuff, you're probably not like a video professional. I mean, there's there are Canon cameras that are made for video. They're the cam. There's the they're the camera company that has the Cinema EOS. They've got and in fact, that's what this whole show is taped on are professional Canon cameras. Like, see it over there. Mm. See that? Not the jib one. The jib one is is just it's a throwaway camera. <laughs> but the good cameras are all really nice Canon yeah. Cinema I mean, EOS. Canon was a 5D Mark II invented the SLR video. Well, with, it was the know. two. The 5D yeah, Mark, II. Uh, Mark II was the one that, like, huge, you know. Right. So, anyway, but um, so anyway, I, it's a wonderful camera and it just cranks me because, unfortunately, the people that make the do the reviews are tech heads. And all tech heads care about is what's on the piece of paper. Hmm. In reality, how many people, like, I talk to photographers, I don't know, I talk to photographers all the time and they go, oh, you're shooting video with your thing? And they're like, most of them say, well, no, I plan on it. Yeah, true. But they're not doing it. The ones that do, you know what they say? They go, well, I've shot a little bit of video. I go, oh, did you make it into a movie? No. It's on my hard drive. It's on my hard drive. I got a folder full of them on my hard drive. You never put them into a video. You haven't done a behind the scenes. You haven't done a promo. Nope. Hmm. So how many users of this camera, if it had 4K, would actually shoot video? This many, hmm. but it's just anyway. I see it on the web, and I'm like, oh come on, that's they've done. It. They fixed every single thing. But, but the 4K, yeah. At the same time, I'm like, you could have gone a little farther, just a tiny bit, and then all anybody would talk about is how great it was. Anyway, uh, oh look at this. So Larry Becker's here. Hashtag Bonjour. surge of popularity. That's wow. that's Larry. Uh, humor. Um, Larry says, I got to do the official Canon 6D Mark II training video that the employees of Canon watched. That's, Look at you, Larry. That's saying something. Larry, that is something. Oh, I love Barb Larry. Is here. Hey, Barb. Oh, look, Barb Crockern's here. Everybody's here today. <laughs> All right. So Bino says, we nailed the name. He said, even I can't say it that well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. Artist First says, please wish Scott a happy birthday for me. Oh, thank you, Alexander. You're very sweet. Uh, says, I hope he has a wonderful day on Friday. Yeah. it's. I'm going to be older that day, so I'll probably be like wow. sad and sobbing and stuff like that. <laughs> Man, we got everybody here today. Like, Lori's here. 
Petra's here from South Africa, and Josh says, I love Surge, oh. in all caps. Says, I can't watch now, but I will later. All right, and the secret drinking game. The word for the secret drinking game word for this episode is le fromage. La fromage. <laughs> Anytime you hear la fromage, you have to take a drink. <laughs> all right, so that was the canon stuff. Here's some more. Here's well, it's not that. That's all, all good news, except for I'm just mad at the press for how they handle crap. You know what else too? You know what I hate? Just I'm, ten seconds on my soft on, on my soapbox. A new camera comes out. Mm -hmm. Nobody shot it. Nobody's held it. No one's touched it. No one's seen a photograph from it. And you go online, and everybody tells you why it's all wrong. Yeah. It's like... You only hear about the train that doesn't go within the train that's... That all the trains which are right. going on time, you know. That's human so nature. Do the French trains usually run on time? Usually. But when there is one that's not... You hear, then you all, hear about it. That's all you hear about. All right. Some bad news, especially for me, because I'm a Lexar Elite photographer. <laughs> Lexar announced... Yeah. Well, Micron, their, their parent company, said they're going to close Lexar. And apparently it's because Micron is making such insane amount of money <laughs> on other stuff. They're just like, oh, memory cards are just kind of a side thing. We're, we're just going to close that. So, like, I've been, I've been a memory, I've been a Lexar, like, elite photographer for, like, I don't know, six years. Hmm. And they're great. I love working with, with Lexar. They're great people. I did a photo walk for them in uh, Photo Plus in New York last year. And uh, they're really great people to work with. Joey and the gang, everyone's been great. And Jeff Cable used to be with them. And now it's now I have to find a different company for for memory cards because every card I have is Lexar. Mm. If I were to open this camera right now and pull out a card, I don't think there is a card in it. <laughs> but if there was, wait a minute, it would be a Lexar, but not for long. No, there's nothing in there. Not for long. No, but anyway, yeah. So now, it's sad you news, know, yeah. But I used I used Hoodman before, and they make excellent excellent cards. So I might I might take up a, a Kickstarter campaign to buy a. Because <laughs> I've got so many Lexar cards. It's insane. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that was some news that Lexar is going away, which is kind of a drag. Uh, let me think what else we got here. Uh, we got some giveaways, of course, today. What are we giving away? Lens Pro to Go gift card. You know that was coming. $50 off on your Lens Pro to Go purchase for someone here in the United States. Because, you know, if you live in Finland, it won't help. We're giving away a Platypod Pro Max. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I've, I've used it, by the way. It's Awesome. Dude, are they great? I, I was in uh, in New York, uh, and on the uh, there was a hotel, and there was only a thin glass. So I used that, and I went like to four second long exposure, and sold the photo to uh, the Caesar Palace. True story. <laughs> oh so, man, it's gonna be a great you. show. All right, so we're giving away one of those brand new in a box today. We're also giving away Moose Peterson's brand new book. Now I got some Moose news here, so I have to wake up my computer and all. We have Moose news. So first, Moose has got a book. It, it, the book is written. It's all laid out. It's literally going to be going to the publisher in about a week or so. And uh, it is on aviation photography. The book, I'm telling you what, is absolutely stunning. It's got information in there. I'm interested in aviation photography. I'm a member of the International Society of Aviation Photographers, the ISAP. But I'm, I'm nowhere near the level or aspire to be at where, where Moose is on another stratosphere. Anyway, he wrote this book. We, we produced it here at Kelby One, but it's published by our friends at Peach Pit Press. Uh, amazing book. And our team, Kim and Jessica Maldonado, did an unbelievable job on the book. It is just, it is going to be the book of books. And uh, we're going to give away one of those today. It's not out on class yet. I mean, not, uh, not out on bookstores yet. But. But it will be. So that's so there's that. Uh, but Moose has got a workshop coming up in the UK, right? So Moose has got a UK Warbird Photoshop. Moose has a UK Warbird Photo Workshop. So you go and shoot Warbirds, which, you know, are like World War II planes, right? Right. All right. Uh, it's in going to take place in, uh, in the UK. It's going to be at the historic Duxford Aerodrome. UK. It's going to be the most exciting photographic workshop we've ever presented. It is hosted by the Historic Aircraft Collection. We will explore, imagine, and immerse ourselves in the photography of World War II history. It is amazing. It's a foo. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, that's coming up. It, is, it starts uh, Friday the 11th. Guys, I'm telling you what. To take a workshop with Moose is just a gas anyway. It's just an amazing experience. But there will be so few slots. If you want to go, the details are just go to moosepeterson.com. Go to moosepeterson.com. You'll find a link to the workshop. 
Go there now. What an experience to be over in the UK and shooting warbirds for days with moose. And he, he's got all the techniques. And so you'll you'll come back with with you know it's it's hard to get access to basically flying warbirds. That's for sure. Right. And and to get access to them, even if you can see them at, a, at an air show, to get access to them at dawn, get access to the sunset when you know just like we want to shoot landscapes and travel. Right. That's exactly when you want to shoot birds. So that's really really great. All right. Hey Jessica. Our art director at Kelby One, rather than working, is watching the grid. And she says, <laughs> she says, I'm just teasing. She works. Let me tell you what. There's nobody in this building that could ever point a finger at Jess for not working hard. <laughs> she works so hard. Uh, <laughs> she says, uh, it's a great book, guys, and we love all our books. So, But it really is. I mean, I got to hand it. I saw the layouts, and the layouts are just stunning. Moose saw the layouts, and he was like, oh, my God. Anyway, go go read about Moose's workshop. It's coming up here in next month. It is uh, the 11th through the 13th of August in uh, in the U.K. In, at the Duxford Aerodrome. Now, people from the U.K. will write, it's not Duxford because they mispronounce everything. They get, always get the words wrong. They'll say, it's Duxfordshire or some crazy thing. <laughs> so they'll call me and write in. <laughs> Jock's photo says, prize of the day, a box full of used Lexar cards. Hey, the cards still work. I still have to. Hey, Sven and I have the same birthday. Hey, Sven, you know who else has the same birthday as you and me? Yeah, it's Ringo, man. Really? Yeah, Ringo's got a great birthday. It's not John, it's not Paul. It's Ringo. No way. Yeah, man. That's, That's cool. Drummers, man. That yeah. is so cool. All right. So what else? We got a little bit more news and we got to get onto this subject because we have the best freaking subject today. Let me just look at my outline here. We talked about that. We talked about that. We do want to mention our fabulous new sponsor, Westcott. The people, the lighting people, the people that make the greatest lighting ever are all here. Oh, I do see. I did see. I got to tell you one thing. Um, the people from MacFun were here for a visit. They're doing a tour to show secret stuff. Mm. Serge, they showed me a filter. I can't tell you what it is. I've been sworn to secrecy, but I have some really good news. They showed me a filter that I swear to you, I'm like, they showed me the filter and I, I hit the table. I'm like, no, <laughs> Serge, you're gonna use this filter on a level. Let me put it this way. If you use nothing else in Luminar, this new filter, you will use. It is. I can't tell you what it is, but I haven't had my mind blown by a filter in a long time. But I was just like, I was. I asked them, "How did you do this? How did you even do this?" They thought it was the funniest thing. I'm telling you what, sir, it's going to change your photography and my photography. We need to get a beta version so we can use it before people figure out we're using it. Yeah, it's coming. When is the beta version coming out? Later in the year, not oh, yet. Not but yet. can I tell you this? Here's the big news. So I had to ask special permission. The PC version is going into free beta, so for Windows, on the 13th. So if you're a PC user- That's crazy. I'm, I'm kind of blowing the lid off this baby. I'm blowing the lid off it. Luminar or? Luminar. Luminar. Okay. Luminar, the PC version of Luminar available for free public beta download um, on the 13th. So I, that's big yeah. news. I love Mac from Fernando, products. did you hear that? Nando, Nando, are you listening? <laughs> Nando, cheeky Nando. Because Nando's very, he's dying to get it. Dude, that, that yeah, plugin so is. I've done a few videos and people are like, when is it coming on PC? When is it coming on PC? Dude, it's, it, it, there, it's the, 13th. Be, it, the 13th. The 13th. It really is. I mean, I love Aurora and Luminar, and I've done a whole training for them on Aurora, and it's really the best AGR stuff. All right. There. Like, no hey, uh, Catherine asked a question. I guess our Facebook feed is being stupid today. So she, she says, can I watch the grid on anything else? Sure, go to kelbytv.com slash the grid and that doesn't cut out because jen actually holds the two cables together <laughs> so there, she's holding them together and she holds them for the whole show and oh my gosh it's just awesome okay so that i think is the news let's take a break when we come back we've got some stories from Serge that are just crazy <laughs> and it's going to help it's going to help you're going to be very very surprised no fernando it is not the ai filter Though the AI filter is great. Yes. Have you tried that AI filter? It's Dude, amazing. It's like one slider called Make My Photo Better. Just slide it to the right and your photo gets better. Yeah. And so I know I got kind of hooked on that. It's it it makes that filter look like a baby. I like a baby. I have no idea what she's talking about. I'll tell you, but see, it's super secret. Ah. It's like super, super secret. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you on the break, and then you you can't tell what it is. Okay. But you can tell what your reaction is. Okay. 
All right, we're going to take a break. Make sure I have a long enough break to explain this filter, Mayor. Put some extra ads in there. We'll be right back. we got a wild show coming up. Don't go away. We're live here on The Grid. Have you ever had your heart broken? I mean, literally like crushed where you're like, you don't know what to do and you're just like miserable and it's just like, I, I had that happen to me just recently. When Google announced they were killing the Nick collection, come on, the Nick collection of plugins has been a secret weapon for photographers for 10 years. We knew that Google was gonna come out and go, look, we're not supporting it anymore. And then one day Photoshop gets updated or Mac OS or Windows and it breaks, it breaks your plugin. I'm there, I'm hearing from people all over the world. Basically, the Nick collection is dead. What are we gonna do? I've switched my workflow over to MacFun's Luminar. Four million people have already downloaded it, so I was like, I gotta try this. Number one, some of the guys from Nick went and started MacFun. <laughs> Number two is I open it up and like, here's all the stuff I missed from Color Effects. It's the same kind of stuff. It's awesome. And it does stuff that Nick Color Effects didn't even do. And it's like, absolutely perfect for Lightroom users. It's just like, it's got all this effects, it's got all this cool stuff, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna teach you how to use it. So come with me as we make the transition from the brokenheartedness of our Nick days to the happy joy of the Luminar days. So come with me, I'm gonna take you from start to finish. We're gonna go through the whole thing. You're gonna love it. My brand new course, it's on Luminar and how to pull your life back together. And it's exclusively here at Kelby One. Hi, I'm Calibra Kelby. Is it possible to capture beautiful and captivating images with just your iPhone? Images that look like they were taken with a high-end pro camera? As an artist and iPhone photographer, I absolutely believe you can. And not only that, I want to show you how. Come with me on this journey to learn how to really unlock the power of your iPhone's camera. How to compose and create gorgeous photographs. Plus, you'll learn my favorite post-processing techniques with some apps you're going to fall in love with. Join me and Larry Becker for my new class, You Shot That With Your iPhone, exclusively on KelbyOne.com. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Rob Foldy, and welcome to my class, How to Make the Peewees Look Like the Pros. So we're going to go over how to get the most from your camera settings, how to clean up your background, shoot from different perspectives, how different lenses are going to help out uh, the look of a photo, how shooting with a long telephoto versus a wide lens is going to affect the photo. We even do some shooting uh, with an iPhone in this class. So this class is definitely geared towards everybody. Whether you're a sports photographer or not, these are some great quick tips that are going to take any of your photos right to the next level. Follow along. It's available exclusively on KelbyOne.com. <clears throat> hey, we are back. Thank you guys for uh, hanging in there. So on the break, I, I did tell Serge what the thing was, and what was your reaction? Oh my God, this is to totally something I'm going to use. I, I was, I didn't expect that. I did not expect that. <laughs> I didn't even know it was possible. I didn't know it was like, possible. Because I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, one I'm, more filter, you know. I'm telling you, I was like asking him, how, how did you do? It? It's something I've never yeah. seen. And it's funny because I met some people on my phone, but they didn't tell me like this is really, uh, this is something I'm going to use. This is totally up my alley. We're all going to use it. It's oh, yeah. going to kill photography forever because it's <laughs> so good. All right. Uh, hey, uh, I do have to give a shout out here to Bob. Bob is watching from hot Arizona, and Arizona has been historically hot here recently. Mm -hmm. And he says, this is the first time watching live. We're glad to have you here, Bob. Uh, Nick says, I'm waiting for the PC version too. Stefan says, nice to see Serge. Hi. <laughs> and... Uh, and Robert says, I have to say, it's good to see two of my favorite instructors on the same screen. Oh, very kind. I would like to see Serge on your show more often. This is your second or third time on? Third. 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 You know what? Here's the thing about Serge. He lives in a foreign country. <laughs> this is He'll probably get deported anyway. This is probably his last time on the grid because I wouldn't be surprised to see people come in and deport him during the show. So I'm just happy to have him here when we got him. We're going to see if we can, he can stay the whole hour. Um, anyway, Lyle asked, what's the link to sign up for giveaways? We give it at the end of the show, but if you really can't wait, it's uh, kelby1.com slash contest. So you have to tell what prize you want to win, too, when you go there. There it is. Wow, that was quick. So, yeah, just go to kelby1.com slash contest contest and then you have to tell us like you have to say i want to win the platypod i want to win moose's book or whatever so you have to just tell us there um nicolay asks how often do you do videos mr kelby and does it help with pho <laughs> photography not not as best as i can tell um so uh here at kelby one we release a a new class every single week 
Um, last week was my class on Mac Funds Luminar. So last week I released a full length class. I went into crazy detail and uh, I, it, the feedback has been terrific. So thanks for everybody who's watched the class and said something kind. So, uh, but we do, uh, you know, ones on photography, on flash, on lighting, on everything every week. Also, um, just want to mention that uh, there's a discount. If you are a Kelby One member, you get 15% off of Luminar. Now, Luminar is only 69 bucks to begin with, which is pretty cheap, but you get for 15 what it does, it's crazy. Yeah, oh, for what it does, it's insane. You get 15% off. If you're a Kelby One member, go to your dashboard, go to the perks, to discounts, and you'll find the the secret code. Yeah, I use I, I use your discounts all the time. Like I just bought an iMac. Uh, Dude, is that amazing what you save? Yeah, it's crazy. I tell people you would be better off to join Kelby One and get the Apple discount than to just go to Apple and buy it. Yeah, because that, you'll save more money and then you'll have a Kelby One membership I bought, too. I bought the top of the line, the iMac. I got like three, four hundred dollars off or something. Right, like, like three or four hundred dollars. It was off. a four thousand dollar computer. I got four hundred dollars off. It's only like, two hundred bucks to join Kelby One and you get four hundred bucks <laughs> off on an iMac. It's crazy. Yeah. It's I wish Apple deal. would let us do big ads that said that, but, you know, they would kill us. Um, <laughs> all righty. So uh, can I, I want to show you something real quick. It was the 4th of July here, which in England is known yesterday as Tuesday. But for <laughs> in the United States, it's a big day. Uh, it's when we, we declare our, our independence from Dave Clayton and Glenn Dewis. <laughs> and so anyway, we, we have fireworks. So last night we went to my brother's house, fireworks display. My wife took this shot with her iPhone. I'll, I'm going to have to show you. I got to go to control room too. She took this shot with her iPhone. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is an iPhone. So there we go. That's crazy. It's an iPhone shot, but right? Did, was, did she stabilize it or just by no. hand? No, she just did it. Because it looks she, like, like a one side exposure. No, no, no. Or... She's doing it by hand. Really? Yeah. Wow. She's just... No, she, I think she leans against the wall and shoots. Like, there's a column on my brother's um, okay, uh, so balcony. Right. But she doesn't have a tripod. She does not have a tripod. That's no, it's cool. handheld, and it's sharp as a tack, and I'm like, it's super sharp. Uh, now, I'm just like, come on. Yeah, anyway, so I just wanted, I wanted to give her a shout-out because I was, like, very impressed. You know why I was so impressed? Because I was shooting the whole time with my, with my iPhone. I did not get nearly as good a results. <laughs> not nearly. Yeah, and she came up with an amazing class. I saw the class. I, oh, you watched uh, yeah, her class? Yeah, I watched the class. I'm a Kelly One member. I watched Dude. her class. Great class on, on iPhone. I know. She, I was so proud. Yeah, she did yeah. such a great class. She's, yeah, and I, I've been watching her stuff for years, you know. Uh, you know, she actually she got me into iPhone photography because I do more and yeah, more. Yeah, you were telling me as we were walking on the set that you you shoot that. Yeah, and I, I, I got inspired by her, and it, the class is really great. I mean, the she really has the eyes of the photographer. She the does. The eyes of the tiger. She she has the eyes of the tiger. <laughs> All right, hey Sandra Slade says Kelby One is the best. Thank you, Sandra. Susan says, uh, have I mentioned how much I love Kelby One lately? I started following you back in 2012 when I attended a Photoshop event you did in New York City. Thank you, Susan. You're very kind. All right. So our topic today, and we're finally getting around to it, our topic today, God, we have just a lot to cover. We still have some more stuff to cover, but so uh, we're, uh, Serge and I were talking today, and, and Serge, so uh, it, the, the topic officially is how to present your images for social media. But, but I will say this, Serge is, and I'm, I don't look, look away while I say this, Serge is making a buttload of money. <laughs> from selling his work and you've just recently gotten jobs right oh good go one up thank you well done all right he's just gotten hired off your social media by national geographic you've got spreads in national geographic mm -hmm. spain you've gotten hired by nike mm -hmm. you got just got hired by caesar's palace and your work is now hanging in a gallery in caesar's palace that's right this is all coming off social media and you've got some insights now some of this stuff we've talked about in kind of a, in a different way here on the grid. We've talked about it with Stella Kramer and stuff. But you zeroing in on on presenting your work on social media mm. is so great. And you you told me a few things. We were back there talking about how these big companies are finding you and how they're discovering you and stuff. Yes. So, for example, let's start with um, National Geographic. Well, National Geographic. So I, I worked for them twice. So it's for the Spain issue I did. Uh, a double cover, it's like the inside for uh, Corsica from a shot, and another one for Paris with the Eiffel Tower. And uh, basically what they, they were telling me is that they only want to work with professional photographers. And Nike told me this, National Graphics told me this, and my publisher told me this. And, but, um, and that is that they, they go on Google Image or 500px, or you know, usually Google Image to find a topic. So they were looking for photos of Corsica. Then they go and click the website to see what's the website behind it. If they see 
a lot of photos, you know, like even if that photo is amazing, but if you see a lot of other photos, which are not that amazing, they don't even call the person. They only want to work with professionals. And so their criteria for who is a professional and who is not is how much photo is there. So an amateur is going to have, you know, five awesome shots, but he's got another 20, which are so-so, and another 60, which are like average. You know, a top, you know, uh, like you, and I actually got this from you years ago. I remember years ago, you told me, I only put 20 photos per section. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going to do the same thing as Scott. So, and it's hard because, you know, we've got so many photos. I've got over 20. Dude, it's stuff. very hard. It, it, it's hard to pick up the 20 best Paris photos. I've been shooting Paris for 12 years. But, so I did that, and... Um, and the amount of work that I got from this is unreal. Of course, you know, uh, yes, I'm popular on YouTube, but all the people that found me found me through Google Image, and you know, going to the website, or eventually Instagram. And every time the criteria was this: you know, a pro has got very little photo, and an amateur has got a lot of photo. And every day, like you, you know, a lot of people write me because you know I've, I've got a big following. Oh, check out my website, and I see like wedding photographers, interior design photographers, or landscape photographers having, you know, 20, 30, 40 photos, five of them are spectacular. I would stop there. Like you would stop get, with the five spectacular stop photos. Stop with the five. Don't put the other 35 photos because if they see just one or two which are average, you're like, nah, no, well, you know, we want to work with a professional. I had to sign a 14 page contract to work with Nike and they only wanted to deal with, you know, for, you know to become like an official Nike shooter. And, uh, and that was really the criteria. It says you had very little photo on your website. So I have a workaround because the problem is that people sometimes, journalists contact me and says, oh, but you only have 20 photos of Paris. Like, don't you have something else? All right. So, Before we go on to that, okay. I want to recap what you just said because you're French. Okay. All right. <laughs> what he said was, first, <laughs> la fromage. Le no. So what you're saying is when you were contacted, and I just want to make sure I got this right by Nike, by my National Geographic. Number one, they said they only want to work with professionals. Yeah. Their criteria for what a professional is, is someone who has just a few images on, your, on their website. True. Not 50. Like, if you go to a category, and like, for example, I went to Serge, we were talking, I went to your website, you have 20, you don't even have 20 photos, 19. you have 19 <laughs> photos of Paris mm. on your website. And when they said, when they go to a site that has 50 photos, 60 photos, they immediately say, not a professional. Exactly. And we were talking, and this is, this is really, really... It, 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 you, you brought this up, but as soon as you said it, I said, hey, when you go to, go to the biggest New York agency that, that uh, represents high-end commercial photographers, how many photos when you go to the agency, let's say they, they represent six photographers, because it's not unusual because I look at a lot of agencies. Mm. It's not unusual for an agency to only have five or six photographers. Abs yeah. If you click on a photographer, how many photos do they have of that photographer's work? Six, eight, ten, maybe yeah. ten, maybe. You, they're making these big companies are making buying decisions on basically those eight or ten photos, not twenty, not fifty, not a hundred. They're a handful of photos. Now, when you go to an agency, you're there to hire a photographer. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I just wanted to point that out first. So, you have this this site that has a very limited number, nineteen of Paris, mm -hmm. and you're from Paris. Have you taken more than 19 photos of Paris? Oh, yes, I have. All right. So this is what this is leading to, because I think this is very interesting, because you have this site that you want the public to see, like you want potential clients to see. Yes. But what if a client comes to you and says, hey, I, I saw you've got some great uh, Paris photos. Is this all you have? So I have a trick that I've been, you know, and there's other ways to do that. But the two main social media I use as my flow is 500px and Instagram. And I've got roughly 40,000 followers on Instagram, about 20,000 on 500px. And so I created galleries. And with 500px, I have a Paris gallery that has 260 photos. So I've had that the other day. Uh, a publisher contacted me and says, we're doing a, a book on Paris L'Amour. The book was about celebrities and their story about Paris. And so they wanted me for the cover. And I actually got the deal, made the cover. But they didn't, you know, they were like, yeah, but we want something for Montmartre. You don't really, you know don't you have more stuff and um, so i gave them so i have a link called photosearch.net slash paris where they have 270 photos but it's not my public face this is only for inquiries right so right. that you only give that link out to someone that says do you have more pictures we of love paris your pictures of paris do you have more exactly because it would be overwhelming for somebody and uh, they it's just the criteria i've also worked one of the designers I've been working with in, in my company used, made a website for a big agency. They represented 13 
um, a photograph, including David Hill, which I know you know. Dave Hill, of course. And and uh, and they, they only had ten photos. They only had the right to ten photos per photographer. And I, from what I understood, each photographer were famous, making lots of money, you know, very successful, and they only had ten photos to represent themselves, you know. And I thought that was really interesting, you know. And so, but you gave me the idea years ago, you know, with this 20, uh, 20 per section, but I didn't realize how much job I was getting because of that. So, you know, thanks to Google Image or whatever social media is going to bring down to your website, you know, just put the best of the best of the best, especially, I think the biggest flaw is wedding photographers because, you know, they have so many photos and so many weddings, you know, and I, I remember once I Googled like best wedding photographers on the planet and I looked at like the five top websites and there was, again, very little photos, you know, it's, you know, yeah, Cliff Mountner's like that. If you go look at Cliff, I consider Cliff to be just an amazing wedding photographer. Number one, you would think all Cliff ever photographs are fabulous looking brides and super handsome grooms. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like perfect couples, but it's because he only shows a few shots and it's his very best, most beautiful shots. And you're just like, you don't need to see 30. You see 10 and you're like, wow, yeah. this is the guy I want. But, but sir, as you said it earlier, do you know how hard it is? Do you know how hard it is to get down to 10 photos? It's ridiculous to get to 20. So Jock's asking, question for Serge, he says, if you have four four categories with, say, 30 picks each. Mm -hmm. That's too much. Should, right. That's 30 is too much. Should I have a portfolio category with the best 20 mixed shots or what? So that's I, what I did. On SergeRemedyPhotos.com, I have something called the best, or I forgot how I called it, which is a mix of, of like, that's the homepage, sort of like give you an emotional impact. Right. This is who I am. Uh, and I think it's got about 15 photos. And then each category is- But they're all travel photos. They're all, yeah, yeah, but they're- Okay, are, but, know, but he's talking about mixed categories. Like he's saying, can I do wedding and then rodeo? And then, you know, like in other words, could I take 20 from, I sure wouldn't do that. No, no, I see what you mean. I mean, also you, if you want to be hired as Z wedding photographer, I would just do a website dedicated to that with very few, very little photos. Right, uh, I agree. Uh, just because that's one of the if things you that start Stella doing weddings about. and you do, you know, cityscapes and you do, you know, macro, and it's like, who are you? You know, I mean, just from a, a commercial viewpoint, you got to, you know, people are bombarded with images, you know, all over the web. So if you don't create an emotional impact in a few seconds, you, you know, you you lo you've lost. And um, one of one people I admire a lot, I talk often about is Eric Almas. Eric Almas just updated his website. One of my heroes, Eric Almas is unbelievable. Unbelievable. For me, he's one of the greatest. One of the greatest, I agree. And he, he has a new slideshow that only has five photos or six on the homepage. It's new, I've seen that over the few weeks. And you're like, you're sold. Like seven yeah. photos, you're sold. You're like, oh my God, I want to work with this guy. I want to learn what he's got to say. So, uh, you know, less is more. That's really the trick. But... Um, I want to take just a little moment because this is actually unreal for me to be here with you because I, just to give you my story uh, before I, you know, I want to tell this story about the galleries more in details, but I started photography in 2004 and um, really out of the blue, meaning I never shot a photo in my life between, before a specific holiday in April 2004. Uh, Kelvin Pimon, which you've met, who is my best buddy, still my partner today, was, uh, showed me Photoshop. And, um, and I realized that a camera and a software, sky was the limit. You could do anything. So I wanted to learn photography. Went back to Paris, went into the first store I could find, bought every book that was ever made on Photoshop. There was about like eight of them, and only read one, your book. And no, I'm not kidding. Blue. This is how I found out about Scott. And, and so from 2004, 2006, I used to watch every podcast by any book you could write, and that's how. I've learned photography. And on the real thing, in 2010, I produced a show for you in Paris. And yeah. I was like, for me, meeting you was like, you know, meeting Michael Jackson and being a fan, you know. Was that 2010? That was 2010. That was seven years ago? That was seven years ago. Or maybe Gosh. 11. Uh, so Matt Kleskowski had gone to Paris and he met you. Yes. You had contacted Matt said, hey, I saw you're going to Paris. So when we wanted to produce a class on travel photography in Paris... Uh, Matt says, you got to call this guy, Serge. He had told me about you already. Mm. He says, you got to call this guy, Serge. He's great, and he's a good photographer. He knows all the places. He knows everybody. And so we did. We called up Serge, and, and we had – it was one of the greatest trips ever. Yeah, and Bart I, I had a blast. was there. Yes, I remember. I and had a Bart blast. was there, and I was there. And uh, and it was unreal because, you know, when you watch somebody – I've watched probably like 600 videos of you before meeting you in person. 
I remember when I picked you up in the airport, I was like, oh, <laughs> because it's, you know, I've learned everything from you. And now, you know, now I've got this big YouTube channel, but I keep saying to anyone, you know, uh, I, I, the wealth of information you have on Calby One is really, I mean, it changed my life. Like literally, it changed my life. I used to be a salesman, you know, uh, and I was successful, but I was really lacking something and you brought something into my life and you've you know you can come back on this show anytime <laughs> sir you're no, but, always welcome no oh, we'll see Serge every week no but I, I, I really want to take that moment to say that because i don't often publicly can thank you well you're I very do, kind I do it every once in a while but thank it, you. it's 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 really uh you've changed my life in so many ways you have no idea and now you're here doing a class for us here in a couple of weeks it's crazy it's crazy how it all yeah. comes full circle where we're we're <laughs> honored to have you here hey uh just some comments here um, let's see. Oh, Jim says, after watching last week's class, I got Luminar. Uh, Mr. Cater says, uh, yesterday I watched your course on Luminar. Love the course. So many tips. Thank you. Um, so Nick says, after all, after that revelation on gallery numbers and Stella's push for white websites, I have a major site redesigned to do ASAP. Yes. Well, you know what, Nick? There's never been easier. So, Nick, I'm just going to just point this out. I've said this before. So, Nick, if you subscribe to the Adobe Creative Cloud, either the photographer's plan for 10 bucks a month or the full Creative Cloud, you get Adobe Portfolio for free. Adobe has a website. It's called myportfolio.com, where it is already pre designed, beautiful websites, templates ready to go. You upload your photos, you can put it on your own URL. It is amazing, and you're already paying for it. You're already paying for it. Yeah. True. So, literally, go. You can have your website tonight. And yes, they have white backgrounds. So anyway, go and and do that. You can't can't do it. Can't beat it. Uh, uh, Antoine says, I totally agree with Serge. So he's really agreeing agreeing about uh, what you were saying about the the lower number. But I'm telling you what. It is, it is so hard. So last night I was at my brother's. Now, my brother is, is uh, there are two people I really look to. So my wife, Calibra, she's got, you know, she's got a great eye. So I'll tell her, all right, which, which shot goes in my port, A or B, A or B? She's like, B. She just knows, B, no, no, it's B, it's B, it's B. And if she says it, I'm done. Well, last night I, I had, I think, 21 shots in one of my portfolios. And I went to my brother and I said, I got to cut one from automotive. I got to cut one for travel. And he was like, that's the one. Boom, there it is. It's funny how other people can see so clearly. Yeah. And that's why it's very hard for you and I because we we have emotional attachment to the photos. Like some of the photos that are in my portfolio I took with you, like you and I are standing side by side. Because my wife and I went back, Cleaver and I went back and hung out with Serge on our own trip just for fun to mm -hmm. Paris. And uh, we went out to Mont Saint-Michel, mm -hmm. which I always complain about you. You know, my seminar tour, I talked about how you and I went and almost died out there. <laughs> but uh, the creek sand, but yeah. I would talk about like Serge lives four hours from the most one of the most amazing places on earth and never went. I'm like, <laughs> you've lived your whole life four hours from like an island that looks like Disney made it and you've never been like nope I'm like let's go so anyway I've we, been at least 10 times back there since but because now my I, I have this dude, workshop you know every May and then we have one day we go to Mont Saint Michel in tribute to uh but your introduction have you ever had a sky like we had that no. day it was it was funny because I picked you up directly in the airport we drove four hours and it was just raining and white we arrived there and just one of the most amazing sunsets I haven't seen in months. Yeah. And it was like, it was the sky I've never had it. I've, I've been back 11 times. It never happened to it me was, again. It was super, super, super uh, easy. All right. So, so now, so we've, we've determined that we're all putting way too many photos in our portfolio. I'm down to 20, I think, for all of mine, but it's tough. And I, I just cut one. Like this morning when I woke up, I was deleting, deleting from my automotive and deleting from my travel. And I still, I might have one that's, I might be over by one or two, but I'm very, very close. Yeah. And I wanted to tell this other story that I told you before about the gallery because I really think, and th this has been actually my past. So I started, I followed, Cal you know, NAPP first and later on Kelby One, but your stuff. And uh, I've learned all my craft. I've, you know, up to a point, you know, I, it took me a few years before I was like, oh, okay. You know, I really like my photos. Uh, it looks like the industry uh, you know, I, I see other people in the industry. I'm at that level. Other people love my photo, not just Flickr, where everybody loves everything, right. you know. But, like, I had great feedback. Then I do the website with the 20 photos. Now, here's the miracle that happens. Because I think when you follow your heart and you pass, stuff happens. And I had the most crazy story happen to me years ago, which totally changed my life. So I, I learned from Scott, got my website up. 
And uh, there's this yellow corner gallery, so 85 galleries around the world. Everybody wants to get there because there's a lot of exposure. Um, I tried to get there. Apparently, they get like 200 submissions a day. Anyways, I once got the name of the owner, sent him my stuff, and, and the conversation started happening. And he said, okay, you know what? Let's meet. I'll, I'm going to test you on three photos. So he takes one Eiffel Tower shot of mine and two other ones. Actually, I think one we shot together. And, um, and then he comes back to me the next week and says, you know, um, I went to school with a guy from Flammarion, big publisher, and uh, we had always this idea to co-publish a book. Well, you know, and I, I think I'm going to talk to him about a, a book about Paris. And I, Flammarion is a big French publisher. I'm like, yes, sir. Next week he calls me and says, I spoke to Flammarion. They want to make a book with you. I'm like, wow, this is so exciting. So come to Flammarion next Tuesday, we'll sign the contract. I'm like super excited. On Monday, the day before, I get an email from a man called Enric uh, Tenaus, and from Tenaus Publishing, which I've never heard of, about, I'm not a specialized in that, and they said, we want to make a book of Paris. And I'm like, yeah, but tomorrow I'm signing with Yellow Corner and Flammarion. And he says, no, you're not. We're 10 times the size of Flammarion. I'm flying tomorrow morning with two of my executives, we're going to meet with Yellow Corner and you're going to, I'm going to show you why you want to work with me. I'm like, I, I couldn't believe it. So they flew the next day. They met with the two creators of Yellow Corner, you know, the CEO, they're basically two partners. And they decided to create a, a partnership that up to today have published over 200 fine art books. They actually even, they are doing, Tash, you know, it's a Tashin store, so now they're doing 10 house stores all over the world together, you know. I mean, great, it's become a great partnership. So now Yellow Corner is like, but who is this guy that they flew over to meet him? I only took three photos. He ordered 27 more photos from him. And so between the books and the photos, you know, my fun art income blew up completely. So it's really this thing is, photography is a passion. So if you've got the passion, you'll take the time to go through all KB1 tutorial, my tutorial, whatever, you know, whoever inspires you to, to learn. But you know, there, there is a learning curve on anything. You know, you practice, you practice and you get that website out, 20 photos, your best of the best, I promise you something's gonna happen in your life. And you know what, we, we, hear, we hear success stories again and again. Um, the thing is, going back to what Jock asked for, <laughs> is like- Oh, Mimo. You might have, is Mimo there? Yeah. Mimo! <laughs> and he goes, hey, Mimo says, so we know Mimo. He, he was, he's from Venice. Yes. Then he moved to Canada. Yes. And, uh, and Venice, and Venice amazing photographer. he is amazing. His long exposure stuff, dude, his, his stuff world. is out of this world. And, um, you know, that since he moved out of, out of uh, Venice, it's never been the same. <laughs> That's right. But he's going back there. I think he's doing a workshop in September. You got to check it. Yeah, he's doing his workshop in September in Venice. He he own, he has a hotel there. He's he knows the place more than anyone. You got to do Dude, he knows every nook and cranny of that place. He is awesome. So good to see you. Yeah, good to see Google your name in there. there. Mimo Medani. Uh, if you want to go to Venice, that's the, the he's amazing. That's spelled M I M O M E I D A N Y, and go follow him on Instagram. Oh yeah, his Instagram stuff is off the chain. All right, so um, we're gonna get down to different categories, but in those categories, because not everybody just shoots, you know, one topic. There are people no. that shoot many things, um, and you're gonna have just a few. Now, I'm gonna ask you, and I know what you're gonna say. If I could put twenty, but I could get it down to ten, it would be better. Yes. Yeah, it's how do you get down to 10? Well, it, it depends. You've been doing it for a long time, but somebody who is just starting, you know, even if under five is kind of hard, but just five amazing photos will get will will get you jobs. So five amazing photos will get you more jobs than 20 really good photos. Yes. I had a friend who uh, who um, had our, you know, had a hard time making money with, a photo, with photography. And, and I told him, why don't you go? shoot this hotel and that hotel for free. You just go in there and says, can I make free photos? But it's an awesome, like four star, but beautiful Paris, French hotel. He got the shot, put it up on his, we got the OTK from the hotel, put it up on the website. And now he's like, he shot that hotel. And so he had a very low <laughs> photos from a hotel that didn't pay him to do the photos, but he could show the world, this is who I am. This is what I can do. And he got jobs. I mean, that was not the only factor, but that was a key factor. Well, sure. Jobs, you know. 
Well, you know what it is sometimes, because a lot of people ask, they go, how do you get a job? How do you get paying jobs when nobody will pay you? Like they go, well, let me see your other stuff. Well, I haven't really done any stuff. Right. So that way of doing it. Now, there are photographers, if you say work for free, are going to go, you can't work for free. No, I'm, try I'm saying building a portfolio. You, you right. want to be a real estate photographer, you never shot an apartment in your life. Yeah, you're you going to have a hard time. Uh, so here's what I tell people to do is, is to do charity work. Yeah, do it whatever. for an organization that needs it. Do it for someone, you know, uh, some something that you believe in where they're they're not going to go hire a professional photographer. Let you be that guy. And no, then, I know. But yeah. if you can shoot but a Giorgio 5 in Paris, I mean, it's... Well, uh, there, <laughs> there you go. All right. So, um, Funny memo. Nicolet <laughs> asks, uh, yeah, what size and quality of photos do you put on your site? I make them as big as I can make them. Yes. Just, I mean, you know what? With photography, size means impact. That's why we want to print everything so large. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I, I was in a, a gallery in New York City uh, last week, a week ago, about a week ago. I was in a gallery in New York City, and it was a, it was called the, um, the Morrissey Hotel, the Morrison Hotel. Mm -hmm. I can look it up because I have a picture of it. I took a, uh, I'm going to look up the name here. I'm going to look on my phone because I took a picture with my phone. Anyway, it is a gallery of, um, of rock music like it's it's a concerts and stuff like that an amazing gallery i walked in we're in soho and i just i looked up and there it was i'll give you the name of the place if you're in new york it's worth it's upstairs you got to walk upstairs but it's it's well worth going it is called the come on where is it i was right there in new york ay 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 oh here it is it is the morrison hotel gallery Fine art, music, photography. So we're walking, my son and I, and I see the sign. I'm like, oh, dude, let's go up there. They had a picture of Led Zeppelin from the 70s, blown up this big. It was 40, like 40 by 30, then framed, then matted, then framed and signed by the artist. It was $4,000. Dude. In New York? In it, was, it was, it was but the size, because you could get smaller versions of it, and it was good. Yeah. The big version of it was like, I want a wall in my house, mm. just, just amazingly. Boy, we got a lot, a lot of comments here, so we're going to just cruise through them. But anyway, size makes the difference. Yes. And we talk about this now once a month or once every two months, really. We'll do an episode of The Grid where we critique people's websites. And that's one of the things that we see. When your images are big, they have impact. You're trying to get emotion. Mm. Those pictures don't don't give us you know little yeah. tiny shots. When they click on them, it's got to be big. Yeah. But I like when you go and there's just a big shot to start. We got to take a break. We're way over taking a break. But we got more surge. We got lots of comments. Blah blah blah. <laughs> don't go away. <laughs> we'll be right back here live on the grid. When you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will prove versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further, Platypod Ultra does it all. Platypod Ultra, now on Kickstarter. Howdy folks, Moose Peterson here at Kelby One with a class I think is just great for you. You could be saying, well, it's about buying camera gear. Kind of is. You could say it's about packing camera gear. Kind of is. You could be say it's geared for specific tasks, specific storytelling that you need to know about. Because it kind of is. It's all those things and more. I'm going to talk about wildlife photography. I'm going to talk about landscape. I'm going to talk about aviation. I'm going to talk about the gear I use, how I pack it, how I get it on site, and then how I use it for specific photographs once I get there. So I've got it all here in one class just for you. So come and check it out only at KelbyOne.com. Hey, we're back, Scott and Serge. Hey, Serge. Hey, Scott. Come on, say something Frenchy now. Bonjour, Scott. Comment ça va? All right. Ça va, <laughs> ça va. Okay. 
Hey, uh, real quickly, we got a new product came out this week, and I just got my hands on it. So I want to tell you about it. It's awesome. So you guys yeah. always hear me talking about Three Legged Thing, a company which I do not really have any, <laughs> any, sure. any. I don't, I don't have any. I mean, I know them. I know I've met them. They're great people. I just kind of fell in love with their products, and I've been talking about them for a year. But I'm not a shareholder or anything. They just created this new universal L bracket. So first off, what the heck is an L bracket? I have so many people when they see me. Oh, this is my new camera, by the way. 5D Mark IV, I finally, finally got one. So I had one on loan from, from Canon for like a few weeks. And I don't know if you guys remember me here on the grid saying I was going to sell my 300 millimeter. The idea was to sell that 300 millimeter to buy a 5D Mark IV. Anyway, but let me tell you about the, uh, the bracket. So this bracket, these brackets are notoriously expensive. What they let you do is you're working on a tripod. You want to change from horizontal to vertical. You just hit the clamp. It's that fast. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's literally like you've got an L bracket. Yes. Are they the greatest thing ever? Greatest thing ever. Are they the most expensive thing ever? Yes. They are ridiculously expensive. They're really great. Anyway, they've come out with one that now it's, it's I'm only seeing the price in British pounds because they're a British company. Forty nine ninety five for probably, an L bracket. Probably like sixty dollars or fifty five. Yeah, but I imagine when they sell in the U.S., they 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 discount their stuff for the U.S for okay. the U.S. market because their stuff is, is really well-priced. Anyway, it has a bunch of neat features. I, I downloaded, I down, I stole the video from their website. It's just a minute and 12 seconds. We're going to go ahead and roll it here so you can really see it uh, basically in action. But this is the new, here's the exact name for it. It is the Universal L Bracket. You can get it in this color orange, which I think just looks cool, mm. or gray. So it comes in either one. It's the three-legged thing, QR11 LC Universal L Bracket in copper or orange. Uh, so anyway, here, watch this little video. It's a minute and 12 seconds, and you'll see what it does. All right, so there's a quick video. Um, it's weird because it's like just kind of quiet at the beginning. <laughs> they, they take a while to get to show you what it does. Uh, Alex asks, what's the advantage of an L bracket versus just moving my tripod head into more portrait mode? One thing is, Alex, is it's designed for you to just take it off and move. Like you don't have to screw it in. You don't have to put it all together. The quick release is amazing. Yeah, but one issue I have, and I had this last week, I was shooting uh, the Milky Way, is that... Uh, when I put it on a portrait mode because I didn't have my L bracket, uh, it, it just was not exactly straight because the, the, the weight of the camera on the side. Right, on, on, it, it, it pulls it. It just pulled it. Just, yeah. And I wanted to get it to the millimeter. With that, all the weight is, is really well balanced. It's perfectly and, and, balanced. And you don't have that issue. So it's, it gives you a much faster and much precise framing. You know Unless you have like a special amazing bowl head. But I, you know what I love too? You can turn these on and off with a coin. Yeah. You don't have to have a special tool. Like I, I, I was at a football game and I couldn't use a remote once because I forgot the tool. Nobody had an Allen wrench on the sidelines that would let me take the bracket and put it on. So anyway. Um, and yeah, last but not least, I with an L bracket, I saved a, a few full, like the camera. It really protects the camera also if it's from a fall. On, from, it happened to be twice where the L bracket saved the camera. I thought I had a better page to show you for this. One second. Let me see if I've got a better page. I'm definitely oh. buying this one. All right. So here it is. It actually comes. It ships in 26 days, but you can order it now. So, uh, oh, where I lost my connection. Hang on. 
Don't move, don't breathe, they'll make a sound. Ships in 26 days. There it is. And uh, there's the video. But look, look, it's designed where you can take, you can put like a, a bracket up. That's a Tether Tools bracket. I love Tether Tools. Uh, you can leave your strap on. It's It's got so many really cool features. It's just awesome. Anyway, you can get it in gray or orange. Uh, and there it's, it's uh, threelegedthing.com. They sell them at B&H and stuff. So anyway, go check them out. I just got mine. I'm very excited. So, ooh, my camera just fell over. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, let's see. Cheeky Nando says, I hope this one supports a battery grip. I have no idea. Yeah, I was wondering. I have no idea. <laughs> but easy enough to find out. Send them a note. Go to their website, Three Lake Thing, and ask them. All right. Jock's Photo says, so my current site on Smug Mug is really aimed at consumers. So there are a large number of images in each category. Do I need a separate website if I want to get discovered? Wish, wish. <laughs> with the creme de la creme? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yes, yes 100%. Yes. Absolutely. I have, I, I have two. I have photosearch.net, which is the equivalent of what you have in Spongebob and surgeremedyphotos.com. I have that both. All right. Roy asks, what do you do about guys stealing your full-size photos? So here's the thing, Roy. Don't put your images on the internet if you don't want someone to steal them. Because you know what, though? Let's say that they steal your full-size photo off the web. No, all they can do, really, you can get it to where they can't download it. They can only do a screen capture of it. Right. Right. But, uh... I'm not much getting with that. And... <laughs> The only people that steals my photos is people who would, would have never bought them yeah, in the first I was, place. That was the next thing I was going to say. Hmm. People that go and steal your photos off the web are not the people that, that want to. Hmm. And, and go try taking a photo off the web and printing it. Yeah. Right? I mean, if they're going to steal it for their desktop pattern, they weren't going to buy your thing anyway. They're just, they just weren't. Uh, Serge says, I mean, uh, Murray from Brampton says, Serge, I have Adobe, Adobe por an, an Adobe portfolio website that i created a few months ago mm. how often should i update the site you and i are pretty much the same on this yes well it's very simple whenever i have like really an amazing photography i'm like oh i gotta put this one up then i have to take one down so that's right you don't grow the portfolio no. what that does by only adding a photo when you get to take a better photo is it increases the quality of your portfolio all year long absolutely you take out the weakest photo and you put in a one that's better than any photo you have in your portfolio, and it keeps getting better and better. I wouldn't update it on a number of days. I would update it based on a quality photo. I just took a photo that's better yeah. than, I, than yeah, exactly. the weakest photo in my, in my thing. Sometimes I go six months by without updating because this is nothing that excites me more than some of my most iconic shots that I've taken over 12 years. So, you know, it, it's got to be really, uh, you know. All right, Stephanie says, I'm really torn about having two sites, one for wedding and one for portraiture. Uh, I think you wedding and portraiture is almost kind of, they are complementary. I wouldn't put automotive and flowers, but I think wedding and, I mean, for example, look, look at the WPPI. It is the Wedding and Portrait Photography mm -hmm. International Association. A wedding and portrait, I mean, they are so closely aligned that I think wedding and portrait would be fine together. Yeah. Like you uh, could put it, you would have a, a site with a category for wedding and a site for category and portrait. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. And, you know, again, we, giving the example of Eric Almas, if you go on his website, you will see he has like three, 400 photos, but he's been voted the best commercial photographer for the last two years. He's got, he's turning down jobs probably from big yeah. brands. When you're you know, turning down jobs, it doesn't matter how many photos you put in your, no, in your portfolio. This is just how I got started. I mean, in, I got this from Scott years ago, and it really is like, don't underestimate the value of this tip. It's unbelievable what it's done to me. Unbelievable. Like, really, it's not like, oh, yeah, it's good. No. If you've got a website with lots of photos, you're just killing your company, like, 100%. No question. Boy, getting it down to 10 would be really great. That's hard. I, well... With who you are and where you at, I'm not sure. I'm just, it would be hard. All right, Johan says, can you use the L bracket on a platypod or is it just for tripods? No, on a ball head, no problem. So use it on a platypod with a ball head. Mm. It fits right on there, no sweat. All right, uh, let's see. Cheeky Nando says, watching the grid every week keeps me going and inspired. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cheeky Nando. <laughs> Nando. So Roy, forget about the people stealing your stuff. Just put them up there. Don't worry about it. Rose says, saving up to come to Photoshop World where I can check out all the brackets. <laughs> Rose, you will have so much fun at Photoshop World. And Rabino Wynn will be there. And I will be there. And and Serge will be there. Serge is one of the instructors at Photoshop World. You can go 
Oh, miss your sons. I, I will be there totally. Oh, it's amazing. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's the fool. <laughs> All right. Let's run up to the top here. I'm just gonna, we're going to blast through some things because we're, we're already over time. Rose wants to know. <laughs> we're all the way back to the top to Rose. Rose says, have we got a Kelby one class on video? Rose, we got a ton of classes on, on video. Everything from using Premiere Pro to how to shoot uh, uh, all kinds of video, like behind the scenes videos, um, music videos, you name it. Uh, Rose, go and look at the learning tracks and find the learning track on video. So we have filmmaking and then we also have post-processing. Uh, Rose says, uh, Kleber's class has changed the way I use my iPhone for photos. It is now my camera. Eek! <laughs> uh, D. Smith says, I watched uh, Kleber's class too. Great. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yoan says, I, I have four categories on my, on my website. Uh, six is too much, Stella said, and 10 photos in every category. Well done. That's pretty good. I agree with you that six is too many because that's what Stella says. But, but now I have six, but I'm, I'm going to, I have a separate site for sports, right? I have a separate, like, just like, just for sports. So on there is football. I think it's just football. I don't think it's sports. I think it's just football. I think I have just football mm. on its own site. And then I have my regular one, but I have football on both. I'm going to pull football off my main. So get, get my number down. Um, uh, Nicolay asks, uh, Serge, do you keep a few of the great photos in your sleeve just in case? Not really, no. What I do is I use 500px and Instagram as really as my, as I go, you know, and again, only my best shots. You know, I was in Canada for a week. I posted one photo on 500px, one photo on Instagram. So it's not like I still use for the best. Did you of the photo best. walk last night in Montreal? Yes, I did. How did you know that I know that? Social media? Yes, I follow you on social media. That was the last, yeah. It was 11 people showed up. It was pretty cool. That is cool. I, I, I find that amazing. You. You know, you're like in a country you've never been. You just put something up. Yeah, let's do a photo walk. Let's all get together. And like 11 people shows up. It's really cool. Did any of them show up with croissant? Nobody. Oh, that's a but shame. They invited me to this special uh, f something like it's fries with meat and 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 melted. Oh, oh, that's um um. Come uh, on, what is it? It's it's the uh, official like thing of Canada. Yeah, it's, I forgot what it is. <sighs> Poutine. poutine, yes, poutine, thank you, yeah. thank you, Juan. All right, Juan, listen to me. Are you listening to me? Oh, I got to talk to Juan for a second. Juan, <laughs> you and me. We're going to go to Paris one day and, and do an update of my class. You yes. haven't been to Paris, right? We have to get Juan there. Yes. Juan would love it. You know what? Juan loves to travel. He appreciates travel. Like, he really does. Like, sometimes we'll be out there, and Juan, we're at some beautiful location, and Juan's like, I can't believe we get to do this. I'm like, me either. <laughs> Juan and I have a very simpatico about that. It's like, you know, when you – one of the things about being a photographer is when you get to go to beautiful places and shoot, it's so nice. Oh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I have pictures in my, in my portfolio that you and I were standing side by side when we took them. I've got one where um, it was um, – we were, I was on your photo walk. So we, d we did my photo walk in the morning and you came with me and then you hosted a photo walk as part of my worldwide photo walk in the afternoon. I was with you. It started pouring rain. Mm. I have a picture of my wife and I huddled under an umbrella. We go into a cafe. We order food. The clouds break. We step outside. It's absolutely gorgeous. And one of those pictures taken right outside the cafe is in my portfolio. Yes, right, right there on the scene. Am I saying that right? Absolutely. All right. Okay. We're going to wrap up with some of these real quick comments. Daniel says... Uh, Hey, Scott. Salute, Serge. <laughs> Super cool topic. Merci. Uh, Todd says, hey, from Clearwater. My two favorite guys. Love Clearwater. Uh, Kathy Bateson. Kathy Bateson. Kathy Bateson. She says, I know how, how, how Serge feels. I've learned so much from Scott, too. Thank you, Kathy. Very kind. Fernando Santos says, applause. Kelby what absolutely rocks. Richard says, Serge, a real gentleman. Gentleman. Merci. And then he goes, he has claps like that. <laughs> and they're... they're uh, Five of them. Uh, <laughs> Antonel says, Scott changed my life too. You guys are so kind. Uh, Mimo says, oh, we saw the, we that one earlier. Antonello says, uh, but you, sir, Serge, are equally as good. And Thank you, Antonello. You know what it is I got to do, Antonello, if I want to compete with Serge? I'm going to, can I do a new promo? Can we go one up? So I'm going to do a new promo for yeah. my new class. Because I, I, I just did this new class, right, on, on Mac Fun. So can we do it? Can you go one up on me here? This is my new Mac Fun promo. Here we go. <clears throat> Madame et Monsieur, my name is Scott Kelby. I am a photographer from Old Smart, Florida. And I want to tell you about my new classes on Mac Fun. It's, it's, how do you say, c'est magnifique. It's incredible, la fromage. Is that good? 
Amazing. All right, thank you. All right. But I can talk English the rest of the time like you do? Yeah, no okay, problem. Good. Let's do it, Scott. All right. <laughs> Doc says, thank you, Surgeon Scott, for a nice, informative episode with lots of valuable com uh, content. Uh, boy, everybody's so nice. Dave Clayton. Bonjour, monsieur. Hey, Dave. Dave Clayton. Who do we love? <laughs> Dave, Dave Clayton. Clayton. Who doesn't love Dave Nicest Clayton? Nicest guy in the world. Best guy. Really, seriously, one of the best guys in the world. Dot asked, have you announced Photoshop World? All right, first, Dot. So he came to Photoshop World. I actually saw him in Midnight Madness. I see him out there in the crowd. I never got to say hi to him the whole time. I never got, I saw him and I'm like, it's Midnight Madness. You know, you've been to Midnight Madness. Yeah, it's madness. It's, madness. it's crazy. I saw him out there in the crowd. Listen to me, Ickle Dot. We're going to have a drink when you come to Photoshop World next year. <laughs> we're going to go, we're going to get a sandwich. We're going to get American food. I'm going to fill you <laughs> with American food when you come next time. All right. We, we have not announced the official dates. I can tell you what they are. If just, it's not like a super secret. But we have the, we're, we're, we're getting the site ready now. But it's going to be um, a little later than it was last year. You know, because you're coming. Mm -hmm. It is Absolutely. May May 31st, June 1st, and 2nd. Right. So there we go. In Orlando, Florida. But there's more to it. We got something really extra good that I'll tell you about later. But anyway, we don't have the site up yet because it, it just says, hey, it's coming soon. But uh, we're working on it right now because we're trying to get the classes and the pre-conferences and all that nailed down. And we got to get – Serge won't tell us what classes he's doing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Serge sent class ideas. And anyway – uh, we are way over. So thank you guys. Uh, thanks for everybody for watching today. Thank you for such a great topic today. Merci that was beaucoup. that was a really that was a, a big. We were back there talking, and I'm like ten images. But you know what? When you were saying that they dismiss, they yeah. dismiss oh, yeah. you if you have too many images. I'm like, that's the first time where someone said these these high end clients. They tell you, yeah, I'd, you had if you'd had 20, 30, 40 images or no, 50 images says it's just screams amateur so they yeah, only, so many they, people are doing images today so they have a way they have to have a way to differentiate the pro from the, the pro and they want to work with professional for copyright reasons for contract reasons speaking for, of professional photographers where can people go learn more about you um youtube.com slash photo search go subscribe to his page he does a lot of amazing i go watch him just to hear the fake french accent it is <laughs> so engaging it is incredible it is amazing bonjour mesdames and messieurs <laughs> See, where the hell's that stuff during the show, right? <laughs> then it comes out and you're like, hey, he's French. It's only for the first 10 seconds. Then I get into the English. <laughs> hey, you have a, do you do a pretty good English, though, when you want to do regular English? Yes. Well, you know, you know, I've been, I, I live in California. It's really sunny there. I'm having a ball, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, it, dude. You, when you're there, no one knows you're from France. No one. But, and then suddenly I come in and I say, bonjour, how's it going? And everybody cracks up. <laughs> and they're like, hey, he's making up a French accent. <laughs> anyway, uh, so go to go to Serge's YouTube page. Subscribe to his YouTube. You'll, you'll have a lot of fun, and you'll see what I mean. Wink. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Serge. Thank Great you to have you again. Stuff. We're excited about the classes that you're, you'll be doing. Nikolai says, bye, and I won't be able to sleep because of the unknown filter. <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you what. We go off the air. We'll be talking. Serge and I are going to be rapping about the unknown filter. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's worse not sleeping over, I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, now that we know what it is, I wish I didn't know. <laughs> Because I want it so badly. Because the first thing I said is, when is it coming out? And they're like, well, it's going to be a little And while. it's hard. You know, it's hard to come up with something new. There's so many plugins, so many filters out there. To come up with something like that, oh, my God. It's crazy. I can't. I, 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 I'm dying to tell you. And uh, I, I, I had to ask special permission just to say that in 10 days, or no, on the 13th, the PC version is coming out of Luminar. So anyway, thank you, guys. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, uh, Jen. Is it Jen? It's Jen. It's Jen. <laughs> just Jen. Just Jen. What about Juan? <laughs> I got to take Juan to Paris. That's right. Cameraman in Paris. <laughs> then you can edit it when you get back and you can play French music and get all hungry like we did in the last one. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, thanks very much. Uh, we will catch you guys next week right here on The Grid. Take care, everybody. <laughs>